What's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon and in today's video we're going to be highlighting the Team G H2OT electric skateboard. I'm really excited for this one because it comes in at a great price point. It has awesome components and it has these rubberized wheels that I'm really interested to try out and I want to test ride those. So in today's video we're going to do a full unboxing. We're going to open it up, see what comes inside and then I'll do a complete review video. We'll go over all the specs and then I'll let you know what I think about this board. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video and let's get right into it. And we're, we're double boxed, so let's open up the next one. So this is what the board looks like. Woo, this is pretty sweet. There's some pretty heavy duty grip tape on here, but these wheels rubberized, it's interesting. I uh, kind of want to test those out and see what the feel is on those. But they also sent these polyurethane sleeves that go with it as well. So it looks like if you don't want to use the rubber wheels, you can use the polyurethane set as well. So they do provide those in the box. It also comes with the skate tool. It comes with the remote, the charger for the remote, the charger for the board and a user manual. So let's go ahead and plug in the charger and make sure this thing is fully charged so I can take it for a test ride. I am getting so excited. Let's go. The H2OT electric skateboard is a dual hub motor skateboard. It has two 600 watt hub motors. It's waterproof rated as IP54. They use a seahorse remote. The deck material is eight layers of Canadian maple and one layer of fiberglass. The rubber wheels are 103 millimeters. There are four riding modes and four braking modes. It holds up to a load of 286 pounds. The charging time is three to four hours. The board weighs 21 pounds and is 38 inches long. And this board is currently on sale on their website for 629 US dollars. All right. So this green light on the charger indicates that we are at a full charge. I've also charged the remote. Also, let's go ahead and pair the remote to the board. So we are just going to hold down the power button on the remote and at the same time hold down the power button on the board and I felt it vibrate I think it's paired let's test it yeah okay so I also want to change it from kilometers to miles per hour so by holding the bottom two buttons it's like the settings and the power button at the same time we'll get into the menu where we can change it from kilometers per hour to miles per hour and then you just use the scroll wheel change it to miles per hour there's also a wheel speed which mine is set at 65 i don't want to change it because i'm not entirely sure what that means uh, typically it'll say wheel size and then you put the size of wheels that you have in that setting uh, but i don't want to mess with mine if anyone knows exactly what that means uh comment it comment that below and help us all out appreciate it thanks so let's go for a ride let's go
All right, let's talk about it. First of all, that was really fun. I always enjoy an electric skateboard ride and I've rode a ton of boards and for a hub board, this one was pretty freaking sweet. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some variables and some statistics about that test ride that I just did. I am a 195 pound rider and it was 64 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which was a little bit cooler and that will affect some of the battery function. I rode this board and tested this board how I test all of my boards. I ride it in the fastest mode. Um, I ride it the hardest I can. I don't ride it on a flat terrain. I ride it just how I would ride it around town if I was going to the gym or commuting to work or going to get some coffee. So I test it in a real world scenario. It's not on a perfect flat road in the ideal condition that you would normally test a board, but that's just how I do it. I like to give you guys the real world application and let you know how it performs in that scenario. So that being said, let's go ahead and talk about what this board was able to achieve for a rider of my height and in those conditions. I hit exactly 12 miles of distance with this battery. I am running the 9.8 amp hour option that you see on their website. I got exactly 12 miles. Uh, right at the 10 mile range, it started cutting out power on me. It was giving me about 50% speed when I was fully engaged on the throttle after 10 miles. So it kind of slowed me down uh, just to kind of make you aware that you're getting to the end of the battery and you need to start heading home. So I continued to ride around my block. I just wanted to push it and see exactly how much range I could get out of it. I got an additional two miles after the battery kind of cut out on me like that. So I got a total of 12 miles. I hit a top speed of 24 miles per hour, which is pretty, pretty decent. And I used this board continuously for an hour and five minutes. And as you can see from this test, this was not on a flat ground. Um, it says I had 928 feet of elevation gain. So this was going uphill, it was going downhill, on road, off road. And you know, this thing uh, gave me exactly 12 miles with a 24 mile an hour top speed. So for a hub board motor in this price range, that's pretty standard. You're gonna get about 20 to 25 miles per hour. You're gonna get about 10 to 12 miles on your distance. So this was right on par where it should be in that price point for the hub motor skateboard. So let's keep talking about it. We're gonna dive even deeper and look at everything on this board here. It is a conveniently sized board. You know, 38 inches is pretty perfect um, with the, the the wider portions right where your feet go and the concave and the really good grip tape. I think the board size um, actually is perfect. So on the bottom here, you guys can see that the battery enclosure is a nice hard plastic. Um, I drove through a couple puddles, no issues there. These trucks seem really solid. I tightened them down once for just my rider preference. And these wheels, these wheels, these rubber wheels, let's talk about them. So typically on a board that is a hub board, you don't have much options for wheels. Uh, sometimes there's a cloud like sleeve, which is a wheel that just is a little bit softer. Um, but there's been issues with those and different companies are coming up with different solutions. And I think this is Team, Team G's solution to um, having a softer ride on a hub motor. So these are rubber wheels uh, enclosed around the hub on the front and the back and they're really smooth. They grip awesome on the cement. For carving it was just like butter. Um, I really felt glued to the ground. I loved how it felt and it was super smooth when I was carving. You typically feel every bump and crack on a hub motor with the polyurethane wheels but with these rubber wheels on here it added just the right amount of cushion so it felt like i was floating it felt soft it felt nice and comfortable on my knees and my joints and everything no problem whatsoever so just in that one ride i was able to test this on some very very uh, uneven pavement i rode it over not just one but several railroad tracks and it never stopped me or got stuck or started slipping um, I rode this on road. I rode it on some dirt paths. I even wanted it off road on this thing. So I took it on a dirt trail as you guys saw and this thing handled the dirt trail no problem. I think that's what sets this board apart from others in this category of the entry level hub board is these wheels and it just comes standard like this. You know, the 
the true test is how well they last and how long they last like that. But the kind of cool thing is that they, they send you these polyurethane wheels. So if the rubber wheels start to wear or you lose some tread or they run out of life, they already sent you with a backup pair of polyurethanes. So these aren't gonna be as soft and as comfortable as the rubber uh, tire wheel, but it's nice to know that you already have these as a backup if these do start to go out. Let's talk about the remote next. And they say this is the Seahorse remote. I'm not as familiar with the Seahorse. Uh, typically I see the Hobby Wings. Um, but yeah, it, it did the trick. No, no issues with the remote there. So this board is not a race car. It's not super fast. It doesn't accelerate super fast but it gets you there. You know, we hit a, a 24 mile an hour top speed. It doesn't get you there right away, but it, it gets you there. So at this price point, um, you know, we can't compare it to a belt drive board that, that costs over a thousand dollars or higher, $2,000. This is an entry level hub board. Um, this thing is a cruiser. It's comfortable. It grips the road, it carves, it floats around and it gets the job done. So if this is your first electric skateboard, don't think twice. You get two sets of wheels with this. It hits the standard range, the standard top speed. This thing is just on par and it comes with a few extra things. So if this is your first board, I think you should definitely pull the, pull the trigger. If you guys have questions, make sure to comment below. I usually do my best to answer all of them. So I'll remind you as usual, continue to get outside, stay hydrated and keep on moving.